Stefan, what have you got for us tonight? I think I think just some of the challenges. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get better at it now, but I'm, I'm still having a difficulty with this uh, this next generation of of technician, and I'm not even sure it's a, it's even an age basis question because the the difficulty I'm having is basically anybody under the age of 30. Um, I'm not sure if it's just tonality or delivery or just they uh, they don't like to listen, man. And um, I'm not sure how to adjust kind of my approach to it. I, I would hope that, you know, when someone doesn't know something, you kind of look to people that are a little more experienced so that you can feel confident in what's being taught to you. But maybe a way to try to break through to, to, to the younger generation and just have them actually use the information that you're giving them and sort of set them up for success so that they can actually see it for themselves. Um, so I'm having just a, a hard time proving to them that, hey, guys, like if you kind of follow the steps, you put in the work, like you're going to be just fine. But I feel like they just they want it yesterday. So it's 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 still a little bit of a challenge for me now, you know, almost being in the role for, for, for over a year. Um, just trying to get the young guys to kind of get on board with you. I think there's a couple of things to unpack in there. Well, one, um, don't beat yourself up too much. Like, obviously, you're you're trying to improve. That's awesome, but don't beat yourself too much. Uh, beat yourself up too much, because the 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 concept is um, bad mothers don't worry about whether they're bad mothers or not. It's the same concept as a shop foreman. Bad shop foreman don't care whether they're bad bad shop foreman or not. Um, or leadership or whatever the case would be. If you care about being better you aren't bad to begin with. You have skills to improve. You have communication to improve and all of those things, but it doesn't mean that you're bad. It just means you're not as effective as you'd like to go down. We could spend hours on this very specific thing, but I'd like to hear Marshall and Russell and Richard's uh, input. I think I'd, I'd be willing to bet it's how you guys, not you in particular, because it's not really anything that he had to do with it but i think it's how that they were brought up into the industry whether it was at their shop or the shop prior um the reason i say that is because i don't typically run into those challenges um and and my apprentices come to me with almost no experience so I'm able to create that atmosphere that they know that they can come to me. I garner the influence immediately from the moment uh, that they come to me. So I have the influence off, off, uh, off the rip. He's trying to come in and gain influence with someone that's already been soured or someone that has had to grind up to this point. And now he's coming in and trying to help and say, hey, I'm here to help. But they've never had the opportunity or had someone that said, I'm here to help you and not stab you in the back. Or I'm here to help you and really mean it and not just disappear or whatever. So I feel like there's uh, a lot to change. The first thing I would probably start with is the newest guys coming in. So I would start garnering influence with your newest guys and do it immediately when they come in. Make yourself approachable and um and 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 those things with the uh with the young guys that are brand brand new. And then just uh the the other guys are gonna absorb and they're gonna see how you are changing the, the new guys for the better. And I feel like uh that is going to be your end because when they see you doing what you're doing with the new guys and those new guys are, are becoming exceptional and they're uh, growing under your tutelage, um, that's going to garner more influence with them. And then you're going to slowly break into them, but it's definitely going to be a grind to break into the, the guys that have, have had to grind to get up to this point. You know, these guys are, I'm guessing a, a few years in, and they've never had anybody to have their back in, in the past. And now you're coming in to have their back. And that's a lot of trust uh, that's got to be 
gained and that's uh a lot of you have zero influence with them that's why that's why they they just they don't care what you have to say um you know the more influence you gain you have to always use that influence in your shop not for the better of yourself but for the betterment of the the other employees and you do that over and over and you it will always come back to you tenfold so like I carry a lot of, uh, for instance, I carry a lot of influence at my shop. So when I have that influence, like like that I have, I will go to my management team and use that to get other technicians uh, training or other technicians raises. I never ask for a raise myself, but I will go out of my way and I will battle for someone else that I know is deserving of a raise. That's how I gain influence with the other technicians. And and it, when you, you're in a position um, where your, your job title automatically has some um, influence with the management team and uh, you have got to be the guy that you're the, you're the, the last bastion between them and the management team. And so I feel like you've got to really, if you were to, uh, another move you could make is to really, is really have their backs uh, openly with the management team. Um, when something's not right, you got to be the first guy to say, hey, this ain't right. And you guys need to fix it. And they've got to, to do it. And you, you, however your approach you've got to take with the management team, you've got to do it. And, and 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 make it happen and i i feel like that's going to go a long way with the the older guys and the mid-level guys and then you jumping in right off the rip with the new guys is gonna you're gonna get that immediate um influence with those guys and keep them from being soured with their bay mates so you're gonna that's something you're gonna have to keep an eye on too but that that's the best advice i got awesome russell um First thing I'd have to say is hire somebody with some life experience outside of automotive first because they need to go out there and they need to suck at other things before they can come in here and realize that this is a good place to be. Because when I came into the business, I was a sour little kid that you couldn't have done anything with. And I left and I went and I did. I went and delivered pizza for a year. I went and served in the military for seven years. I went and did embraced the suck and when i came back 11 years later i had an attitude that was teachable so you know i guess you can't always do that with everybody but you know marshall's one of his guys was a, a cook um he's he's done other jobs he's seen other things he he knows what good he's getting by coming in to this business and so you, you've got a teachable attitude. If you've got somebody that's straight out of school and thinks they know everything and they're not teachable, you're going to have a hard time with them. Um, and you can try to work with them. Maybe Richard's got some better, better cues on what to do with somebody like that. But for me, um, I couldn't work with them. But with people that had actually done something else and came in and they wanted it, I could really work with them. So... Is it's up to them. They've okay. got to want it. They've got to want it. I think that's the other. That's the other side of the the mentor mentee cue. If they don't want to learn, they don't want to grow. They don't want to listen. They're not gonna listen. Um, I think there's. I think there's more to. I think there's a lot more to unpack there. But I think that's that's definitely part of the puzzle, Richard. It's the. It's not really, um, I wouldn't say it's a generational gap thing. It's, there's like, there's a big change with work-life balance with a lot of this younger generation. And um, I'm seeing a little bit more of a swing back to uh, more working, like a more work centric, uh, mentality on some of my younger guys, you know, guys that are like 
fresh out of high school, 20, like early, like early twenties. Uh, I'm seeing more of a swing back into like, I want to make as much money as I can. I want to get into this trade. I'm interested. I'm seeing a lot of those guys that are kind of the, the needles start to swing back towards like what, what we, you know, I know what I traditionally grew up with was like, you go to work, you put your head down, you put your time in and, and you, you earn the respect of the peers around you. And then there was a, a shift here with, I'm not too sure what, I think it's the, I don't even know if it's a millennial generation or there's, there's like a gap in there with this, the, this next generation coming up, which would be my daughter's young, like my youngest daughter's generation. Uh, that's the one that I'm seeing the swing back, but like, younger millennials there's 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 definitely a um there's a certain appeal you have to have not everybody's cut out for this industry right and and some people need to be told that they need to be told that hard truth like that you're not cut out for this industry you need to go find something else to do because not everybody is right like that's and the people that have ground it through and and uh, and gotten into the industry, and a lot of it again comes from like what Marshall said, where you know they you got to have the influence in the shop. If you're if you're not it, you have to figure out who it is, and and get them on your side, right? That that's a uh, that's a huge factor, right? If, if, if you're, if you, you should have a pulse of your shop, you should know what's going on with your shop. You should know what's going on with your guys. And even if they don't come and directly talk to you, you should at least have a good enough rapport with, with the guy who has the pulse of the shop, right? Cause my guys won't come and tell me everything, but my, one of my bay mates has the pulse of the shop and we talk all the time and I find out everything and anything that's going on in my shop even when guys don't talk directly to me the other the other killer in the shop and i'll tell you right now i have a huge problem with this in my shop i mean i only have 10 guys and i'm gonna be i'm gonna piss a lot of people off on wednesday but cell phone that is the killer right now in my shop. Guys, I've walk I've I've I'll walk past and their heads are down, phone in front of their face, right? And the biggest thing with my apprentices is, you know, stop watching YouTube, stop looking for shortcuts. You're getting paid to do the job right and by the book. As you get older and more experienced with this career, then we can start showing you shortcuts. We can start showing you what you don't need to what you don't need to put a torque wrench on, what you do need to put a torque wrench on. A lot of it comes into feel and to play, uh, just general experience from that. But like with my apprentices, I had one at one location that was horrible for would never read service information. Never, ever, ever read service information. YouTube was his go-to. Every time he would have a problem, I would come around the corner. He would come and ask me. I would come around the corner to his bay, and it would be YouTube. he would be like, well, on here it shows this. And that. I'm like, hey, you need to close that. You're paid hourly. I need you to focus on the task at hand and to do it properly. So, again, a lot of it comes down to, you know, the, the relationship that you have with with the guys in the shop but again you have to some of those people need a hard conversation where they're not you know people are built for this this trade and people are not built for this trade and you know that's you gotta they might be built for working at an independent shop they might be built for working at hd they might be but you know the automotive, the automotive world, especially the flat rate automotive world, can become extremely cutthroat, and it takes 
it takes a certain type of individual to be successful at the flat rate game and and not i'll say it flat out like not everybody's cut out to be a flat rate technician some people may be phenomenal diagnostic technicians but you put them in a flat rate environment and they fall flat on their face and they can't handle it you know maybe they need maybe they need to go work in a different environment but getting through getting through to to techs like that's if you haven't if you haven't garnered the influence with those techs in your shops then you need to find out who has the influence and you need to talk to them so that's my input on that so there's a couple of things in in all of that that I would say um influence is a big deal the pulse of the shop is a big deal and i think that that speaks to a lot of things. If you don't have influence and you don't have the pulse of the shop, it means they don't trust you. And whether that's the case or not, I don't know. But anybody listening out there that if you, if you having difficulty directing your team in any way, shape or form, I would always look to trust first. Um, because if you don't have the pulse and, and you don't have influence, it means they don't trust you. And, um, if you're in that position, in order to garner trust, you have to give them a reason to trust you. So to 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 put to, to use to use Marshall's example literally, he's using his influence to help others. Right? In that circumstance, that's using the influence you have with management in order to better your team in some in some way. And if you are in a position, and I, I don't know whether you are or you aren't. Um, if you aren't in a position where you can't autonomously make decisions to help part of your team, it, it complicates things. And many shop foremen and service managers are in a position where they don't have the autonomy and the authority required to immediately instill influence of some description, whether it's making a decision on repairs in the shop, making a decision on applying tools, fixing things, whatever the case may be, simple things. If you don't have the autonomy and authority to do that right away, it's very difficult to garner trust. Because one of the, the easiest things to do as a shop foreman is to make changes in the shop that benefit everybody that require no detriment to anybody, like yeah. repairing equipment, like, uh, like ordering a new special tool of some description or another, right? Those are quick, easy wins that you can do at any time as necessary if you don't have that that autonomy and authority it makes your life difficult now that also speaks to other things what kind of trust do you have from your management team if you don't have the authority and the autonomy of your management team to make those kinds of decisions you need to build trust with them first not with the team first because if you can't show to your management team and I don't, again, I don't know whether this is the case. If you can't show to your management team that they can trust you with those smaller decisions, maybe first you should be putting in, in some boundaries and say, hey, these are the things that I see that I need to do in order to garner the trust with the team so I can help move them towards our common goal. Can we put these things in writing, like budgetary things in, towards, in, in terms of fixing stuff, um, in terms of morale kind of conversation, you know, we talk about pizza parties and we all laugh some form of shop morale device of some sort. doesn't matter whether it's a party or whether it's a gift or whether it's freezies or whatever the case means, some way for you to garner trust with the team that you can do autonomously with your, with a level of authority capable. The secondary portion is re people repeat what you recognize them for. So if you're in the shop all day long, it doesn't matter whether you're managing three technicians, you're managing 300 technicians. If the only thing that you're going to technicians with is negative, that's all they're going to repeat back to you. So whether it's them, them not listening, them not paying attention, them giving you shit for this and that and whatever, if you're only going to them with negative, they're going to repeat negative as much and amplify it because you're one person to five, 10, 15, 30, whatever. So when you give one piece of negative to 15 people, that's 15 things that come back to you. So your perception of the negative is going to be skewed. But if you give one piece of positive to 15 people, now it's 15 pieces of positive coming back to you. 
So as we use the 80-20 rule in just about everything we talk about, if you have to give somebody something negative, make sure in the next 24 hours, you give them at least four things of positive. We've talked about that concurrently as well. Russell, you looks like you wanted to jump in. I was just saying that um, when you do those uh, morale booster parties, avoid Little Caesars. Do something more, uh, <laughs> more substantial. 100% agree. Um, I think the, the one of the things that I've seen some service managers do and I've done myself is make sure you know what the shop likes. And that's where that pulse comes into play that, that Richard was talking about and Marshall was talking about. If you, you know, pizza party might actually be the thing to do. Like if nine out of the 10 techs in the shop absolutely love Little Caesars, Little Caesars is the thing to do. But if nine out of the techs, nine out of 10 of the techs in the shop can't stand pizza or tired of pizza and they all like falafel, get falafel. Know what the team likes to eat. Bring in the Go taco ahead. truck. <laughs> Bring in the taco truck. But I think that the part of it, we're, we're coming back to trust. I think at the end of the day, especially when you're talking about men, because 96.4% of, of American mechanics are men. So the likelihood that you, you have to have, what is it? 90, you have to have a hundred tech shop and 96 of them will be men and four of them will be women, women statistically. So, you know, on that ratio, you can pretty much uh, 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 agree that majority of the conversations are men to men. When you are having those kinds of conversations, I would suggest that majority of that is based in trust, whether you're going to listen to somebody who's talking to you or not. If you haven't earned their trust, they're not going to listen to you. Period. Because it doesn't matter whether you're talking about something technical or whether you're talking about something emotional or physical or whatever the case may be. It doesn't matter. If you haven't earned their trust, they're not going to listen to you. And that's when the do as I say, not as uh, sorry, do as I say, not as I do doesn't work because then you're trying to uh, inflict authority onto somebody to do something and force them to do something. Maybe they don't understand. Not only do they not trust you, but now they don't don't trust you and they don't understand what you're saying. So I think as as a as a steps to help you in your shop, if that's the case, you need to earn their trust or earn more trust. So they, that you can build influence with the team, build influence with your leadership so that you can be more effective in your role. I think that's a great question. I think that's a great question. 